the rain cascaded onto the mast of the ship, the Little Mermaid waved her final goodbye to the prince and his bride as she threw herself into the choppy waves and turned to seafoam. She was alone forever. The end. And they all lived happily ever after. Is she okay? Thank you all so much for coming to this month's fairy tale reading by the Dragon Tales owner, Amelia Story. Make sure to pick up your own happy ending on the way out. You can't say that to eight-year-olds, Bo. I had to say something. You're flapping harder than the cast of Naked Boys singing. I'm exposing them to a new perspective. They're processing the unfortunate truth that a woman's voice was stolen in a classic masterpiece. Excuse me? I have a question. See, they're engaging. Go, Go ahead. ahead. That wasn't the Little Mermaid. That's actually a statement and sort of a rude one. Amelia. Well, I've got this. Well, I know it may not be the version of the Little Mermaid you're used to hearing, but actually, this is original text by Hans Christian Andersen. But Ariel didn't get married to the prince. That's not a happy ending. So? So if it doesn't have a happy ending, then it's not a fairy tale. Well. Fairy tales don't have to be all princes and princesses. Sometimes a princess can marry a princess, or a prince can marry a prince. I have two moms. I already know all about that. But that only happens in real life, not in fairy tales. Ever heard of the word nuance, kid? <laughs> okay, so what fairy tale can I read that ends like that? Shrek! That's not a book. Your boyfriend's kind of stupid. Oh, sweetness. I am not her boyfriend. She has a lot of generational trauma to unwind. Bo, could you mind the register? As you wish. <laughs> See, lady, you own a bookstore, and you can't even name one fairy tale that ends without a prince marrying a princess. But I just did. Uh-huh. So what you're saying is the prince can marry the princess? Or she has to off herself? Or generally suffer some kind of irreversible bodily harm. So in order to have a fairy tale life, you gotta either get married or die? Hmm. I will say, I, I say what you mean. Glad I'm a boy. Got any snacks? You can bob for apples at the wishing well on your way out. <laughs> that child may be your new arch nemesis, but I kind of like him. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, 6 p.m. That means we can break into that stash of wine you hide under the wishing well and think I don't know about. <laughs> Can't. I have yet another Tinder date tonight. And I need to wash the defeat of today off me before dinner. Just don't wear your green jumpsuit. Oh, come on! The vibe is hipster tween dresses like a World War II mechanic. It brings up a lot of conflicting feelings for people. <sighs> Got it. Oh... Am I destroying the hearts and minds of our youth? By owning a children's bookshop that promotes literacy and community? Hard no. But what kind of lives are these stories representing? Not mine, that's for sure. You're a cisgendered, straight white lady who is single, over 30, and owns a bookshop. Obviously, you're a witch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. Joan of Arc never argued in favor of women's suffrage. Uh, is that your fourth glass? Yeah. Should we get another bottle, Tom? Uh, it's Eric. But she was an ardent supporter of the Catholic Church and the French monarchy. So honestly, it's doubtful Joan in all her queer ethereal glory would have even sympathized with democratic ideals. Uh, right. Honestly, let's get Joan, Steinem, and, I don't know, Z-Way in a room and just have them hash it out. Well, um, Amelia, I have an early meeting in the morning. It's Saturday. All the same. Uh, waiter, check please. Ugh. Right away. I, on your Tinder profile, it said your biggest turn-ons were french fries and consent. Yet here you are, proving that despite what modern men say, they still can't handle a woman with strong feminist ideals. You know, it, it's amazing how much you seem to know about me, considering you haven't asked me a single question tonight. Just 30 seconds ago, I asked you if we should get another bottle of wine. And how did I respond? Oh, uh, well... Why is it always on the woman to be a good listener? <laughs> I spent 30 minutes trying on different button-ups and said, I care, but not too much. And a week researching book-themed restaurants that still had great tasting food and an impressive wine list because your profile mentioned you own the dragon's tail. This place is themed? Why else would the cheesemonger have a sword? You know my shop? Yeah, I go into it every weekend with my niece, Anna. She adores the stories about knights and... Pirates, princesses. Another one bites the dust. Bites the dust. 
Okay, Amelia, if you don't want to be in a relationship, there's nothing wrong with that. But please don't use your feminist theory and self-righteousness as a shield to actually getting to know somebody. All it does is waste my time and yours. We to drop the mic, Todd. Real impressive stuff. It's Eric. On, on, open, open. Stupid vintage box. No quarter but a bookshop that looks like an anthropology Pinterest board until there's a freaking monsoon. Ugh. Stop using feminist theory as a shield. Looks like those three sessions from BetterHelp really made you a better man, Todd. See, I do listen. Ugh, maybe he's right. Or maybe I just need another glass of wine. To the wishing well. Oh, always leaving the well running. What the? Who left this note on my bottle of rosé? To my favorite witch. God, I hope that doesn't stick. I'm hoping I'm wrong, and tonight and was tonight a raging was a success. was a raging success that led you to ripping off a stranger's clothes. But I know you, and I know you wore the jumpsuit. It's flattering. And I figured when you, figured headed, when you back, headed back to the dragon's tail for a nightcap, you could have a reminder that you are seen and you are loved by this queer man who will never, ever, ever want to see you naked, but loves you anyway. So pop this cork and cheers to yourself and grab an apple from the well, even if they're poisonous. So what? Who cares? You're magic and you can handle it. Now, make a wish and get wasted so we can work tomorrow and you can tell me all the cringy, awful things that happened at this dinner and pay me in mimosas to be your unqualified but very good-looking therapist. I love you, baby. Drink up. As you wish, fairy god fairy. Jeez, it's getting bad out there. A wish, huh? Okay. I wish... I wish that instead of just selling fairy tales every day, I could live one of my own. I can't believe I just said that out loud. And that kid was right. Married or dead? Those are the only options for ladies. This is your fault, you know. Yeah, you. Jane Austen and Joseph Grimm. You, you don't even belong on these shelves. You belong at the bottom of this well. Take your beanstalks. And your delt skin. I spent my childhood memorizing your pages like prophecy. I grew my hair long like Rapunzel. Strategically left shoes behind at birthday parties like Cinderella. Adored books like Belle. I even bought this shop to immortalize you. So I just wish, I wish, I wish instead of your weddings and your dragons and your dresses and sidekicks and princesses without mothers or underdeveloped backstory that there was a story for me that fit all of me into your happy endings and ever afters and once upon a what's going on what what's happening what the Okay, Amelia, no more cheap wine for the wishing well stash. Only the good stuff. You are literally in a pit of mud. Ugh. Okay, excuse me, Mr. Pig. Gotta find a taxi. <laughs> what borough is this? See, overgrown beards, chickens, handlebar mustaches, hipsters. Must be Brooklyn. I'll Google map it. No cell service? Wow, what is this place? Cult? Taxi! Taxi! Uh, uh, milady! Can anyone uh, around here help me find it? A... Maybe there's service over here. Maybe get out of the way! Milady, you're. Well, miss, you. Ma'am, there's a horse in the. If you could just step aside. Ma'am, 
Oh, Zoot. <clears throat> Ow! Are you crazy? You pushed me over! Apologies, but were it not for me, you would have been flatter than a giant's footprint. Ever heard of the concept of consent? Who said I needed your help? Um, the horses that were about to trample you today? Are you serious? Well done, your highness. She would have been a goner without you. <laughs> and your hair is impeccable as all. I'm not a damsel in distress. So I didn't see the horse, thank you, but did you have to throw me down in the mud? <clears throat> That's not mud. Ugh, gross. Get me out of this cosplay nightmare. Do you have a phone I could use? I need to get to 69th Street, stat. Uh, a phone? Uh, yeah, you know, a way to contact my friends. Oh, uh, maybe I could have someone fetch you a raven or something? You are really committed to the LARPing of it all, aren't you, bro? So, no? To the raven. Ugh. Perhaps I could help you find a place to bathe? Whoa. Why would I go to a strange place with a stranger to bathe? I saved your life and we're both covered in pig shite. I do smell pretty rancid. Yeah, I'm getting whiffs of moldy troll crotch with <laughs> a dash of asparagus. Okay, buddy, fine. <laughs> Lead the way. <laughs> I'm Amelia. Amelia Story. Pleasure, Amelia. I'm Charming. Prince Charming. Sure you are. So, Mr. Charming. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Uh, no need to be so formal. Right. Mr. Charming must be your father. No, that would be King Charming. Of course. Listen, we've been writing quite a while. The budget on this LARPing extravaganza must be insane. Super impressive. But just so I'm sure you're not a serial killer, where are we headed? Hmm, not much further. We've circled Lily Pan Pond, we've crossed Fire Lake, we've scaled Merlin's Ridge, and are currently in the field of singing daffodils. Aren't they nice? And soon we will reach the door of my betrothed. You're betrothed? That's formal. Well, Blanche. She's, well... We're quite the pair. Wait, did you say singing daffodils? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> we've arrived. Here, let me help you down. I've got it, Charming. Hup. Well done. Huzzah! <laughs> Huzzah? I told you if my name is on the snacks, don't eat them. PC, what are you doing here? Do we have some royal appearance I forgot about? Hey, hey, B, no, uh, it's, it's nothing like that. It's... Oh, Merlin's beard, you smell like pig shit. That's me, actually. Hi, uh, I'm Amelia. I love your tat. Is that a wolf biting a red rose? Uh-huh, yeah, it's a thing with my sister. Hi, could you excuse me and me and my betrothed one sec? Oh, sure. <laughs> Uh, cool. I'll just awkwardly stand out here while you guys hash it out. What have you gotten yourself into, Amelia? If you make it out of this alive, you are never drinking again. Amelia? Hey, girl. Hey, there. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to wash up before you come into the cottage. One of my roommates has allergies and pig shit isn't hypoallergenic. The seven of them are gonna come out and help you get situated. You have seven roommates? Great, she's a talker. Oh, don't be such a rotten oh, apple. Sorry to bombard you there, miss. All of you live in that tiny cottage? Does it look like we take up that much space, lady? <laughs> Here is a towel and a bar of sudsy lard. I hope that means so. I'm Rory. Top of the morning to you. I'm Ryder. <laughs> Regan. <laughs> I'm Rami. Dr. Richard, if you please. R -r River here. And of course you've met Reggie. Yeah. Pleasure. Hi, ho. Ah, it's uh, seasonal allergies. I'm not contagious, I promise. Well, I guess I'm off to the well. Okay, Amelia, be cool. It's your seven short roommates, all who have unique personalities. Totally normal and... We'll just skim over the fact that the guy called Charming, your highness, in town. There has to be a logical explanation to all of this because there is no way a wishing well vortex sucked you into the very stories you were wishing away. I wish! I wish! Oh, what the... <laughs> 